Nadine and welcome to Hopalong Studio. In today's video, I want to share with you how you can use stencils with your jelly plate. I will be going over how to create more subtle textures, how to create very bold textures, how to use both those positive and negative images, and also the difference between masks and stencils and how you can use these in different ways with your jelly prints. So let's get started. So there's a variety of materials we can use for these projects. I'm going to share with you what I will plan to use today. I have a lot of different stencils, everything from 12 by 12 to much smaller 5 by 9 stencils and even smaller ones from there. I also have a variety of masks that I'll be using in this project. I also have a couple different sizes of brayers that I'll be using today. I'm also using an 8 by 10 jelly plate. There's a lot of different sizes of jelly plates. Any of them will work for this project, but this is one of my favorite sizes and I'll explain why in a little bit. I'm also using three different types of paper in today's project. I have a mixed media paper, I have a just regular copy paper, and as well a premium smooth copy paper as well. And I'll get into what the differences between these papers are as we get into this video. You can use almost any type of paint for these jelly prints, but my favorite are the Pibio Studio Acrylics. I find that the viscosity of the paint, they all have pigment in them. If you're looking for a reasonable price for paint, they're really good choice just because of the quality of the pigment. It is a studio acrylic. It's not a high-end acrylic, but I don't usually use my very fine art acrylics in jelly printing. I've also been trying out these cheap acrylic colors and they've been working quite well. And these Amsterdam ones are a newer one that I've been using and I find it also works very well. If you'd like any of these supplies, check out the links below. I have the full supply list there. It doesn't include affiliate links, but that is a way that you can support this channel. Basically, affiliate links means that Every time that you buy from one of my links, I get a small commission and that's at no cost to you, but it does really help me as I'm creating videos and it keeps this channel going. So thank you so much for your support. So when you are choosing a stencil for jelly printing, be aware of a few things. One, the larger the hole, the easier you're going to be able to get a good print. You're going to be able to see the textures a lot more clearly, especially if you're going to be doing something on top. Uh, smaller, more fine stencils, especially ones like this particular the Stamperia stencil, all those fine areas, those are going to be a little bit harder to get paint through. So it's something to think about whether or not you're creating more subtle textures or you want to have a bold contrasting texture. Be aware of what you are looking for in a stencil. The size of the holes will affect what your final image is. And you may notice that I am wearing gloves while I'm doing this and part of that is due to a paint allergy that I have. And so don't feel that you need to wear gloves. I just use them just so that my I can keep jelly printing and keep creating art. So I'm going to start with a little bit of the Amsterdam acrylic paint. I'm putting a little bit down on the surface. And working with a larger jelly plate instead of a smaller one makes it a little bit easier because if you add a little bit too much paint, you can usually spread it out on your surface without too much trouble. The other reason I like using a large jelly plate is I like usually doing larger art journal pieces and so this size works a bit better for me. But I have a whole range of jelly plates depending on what I'm using it for. So I just find that having more of a surface allows you to have a little bit more variety in your techniques and in your pulls. Because you just have a bigger space to work with. But if you're into any of jelly printing, maybe start with a smaller one. It's, it's a very easy way of just getting used to a jelly plate and kind of getting used to it in your creative practice. So what I've done here is added some paint and now I'm going over it with my brayer. Sometimes when I mix like, all the colors together, I end up losing a little bit of some of the highlights. So in this case, I decided I would do the blues first so that I can get that strong blue mix. And now I'm going to push into the gold. And I have a thin layer, but not a super thin layer on my surface. And you don't have to necessarily just go one way. You can go a lot of different ways depending on the mark making that you want. And so by doing this, you can see that now I haven't lost the gold with all that extra blue because there was more blue on the surface than the gold. So this helps a little bit. And again, you want a thin, even layer. You don't want it really gloppy. You don't really want it super thin because I tend to like taking two prints every single time I print. So I'm going to take this mixed media paper and I'm going to line it up at the bottom. And I'm just going to run my hand down it to grab a print. And I like this mixed media paper because it isn't too heavy, but it's heavy enough that it does hold up to the paint really well. 
And so if you're just looking for a simple braided print, and you can see the areas where I have actually put down the paint. So if you don't like that, what you can do is you can always put it down first on a palette paper like this and then print on it if you don't like those marks. And then my second print, I'm just gonna use some regular copy paper. What I find with the copy paper is that it's good for fine layers of paint, but if you put too much paint on, they tend to curl. And it also depends on what you're using this for. If you're taping it into a book, it doesn't necessarily have to be super sturdy, but sometimes I like actually making books of my jelly prints. And that's why I like using the mixed media paper. It usually holds up a little bit better. And so that pulled up another bit. And again, having a lot of white showing through doesn't bother me because I'm just going to add more prints on top of it. The paint stuck to the surface in your I was talking. And if this bothers you, all you need to do is go through and add a little bit of hand sanitizer, which in the last few years I know we all have tons of, and just pull off that paint. Uh, usually I don't do this though. I usually leave the paint on the surface just because I can usually pull it off and other prints and I get some really fun surprises. But just as in general, if you find your jelly printing and you're finding that you're getting muddier and muddier prints, this is just an easy way of just cleaning up your plate without taking it to the sink. So that was the basics for just adding color with a brayer and taking a simple print. I'm gonna add a little bit more gold onto my surface. I think I wanna go in with some really bright purple, this permanent violet. And maybe a little bit of this magenta as well. And that was a lot of paint, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm working on a larger jelly plate, it usually, even though it seems like a large glob, you can usually get it to even out on the surface and it's not that big of an issue. And these ones I'm mixing them a little bit more than the previous print. I just try not to lose too much of that gold. I love the, the gold accents on a lot of my prints and sometimes I end up losing it by adding a little less of it than the other colors. And so the first thing I want to show you is how to get a more subtle texture with a stencil. So what you can do is you can set it down on your surface and pull it up. And you'll see it's a very fine texture that you've added onto your jelly plate. And I'm going to do that a few more times just to get a nice subtle texture on my page. I'm going to come in with a piece of paper and if there's more paint on your surface you'll find that your paper will slide a little bit. I would suggest hold on from the bottom and then press up. There's some people that add a brayer and you can totally do that. What I find though is the moment you start getting into leaving the stencil on the surface when you take a print, I find that it doesn't always get into the spaces I want it to quite as well. It's a very subtle design and that's the point. I didn't want anything that was too bright or too bold and then I'm just going to try to take a second print here. And the idea is to print fairly quickly. As I'm talking, I know a lot more paint is sticking to the surface of my jelly plate just because I'm talking as I'm doing this and explaining as I go. And so you can see there that using the copy paper, it did curl a little bit, but you do get those little bit of those ghost prints, which I always really like. So now I'm going to go with some pink, some of the Prussian blue, and of course, a little bit of gold because I love the gold. And if you add smaller dots like I did there, you can get more of a better color mix like you see here. It just depends on how much you want them to mix and how much variety in the color you want. So with this one, I'm going to go a little bit differently. What I'm going to do is I'm taking our stencil and I'm pushing it down and I'm pushing it down again and actually I'm just going to almost do the same thing like I did last time except this time now I'm going to put it down in the center and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of more fine copy paper and I am just pushing it onto the surface and this is where you could use your brayer if you find that you have a little bit of extra paint and it's sliding a little bit you can always use your brayer just to get that first initial set and then find the stencil and you can see the outline here very faintly 
and just give it a good rub because I've left the stencil on the surface and so we want to try to get it through all those small holes. So now when we pull it, you can see that I did get a fairly good image and this is where these fine stencils are challenging because sometimes you have enough paint where it'll come through and you'll be able to push down hard enough and you'll get that perfect image other times you won't if you're using a stencil more like this you'd have an easier time getting that kind of image and as always I just pull that up taking another piece of paper I'm going to grab that print this is what we're talking about with positive and negative images. This is where you get both that positive and that negative image. So now it hasn't picked up much of the paint around it, but this is the focal image. And then this is where you could add other layers around it as well. And there I even managed to get a third image. Not very strong, but again, you can pull up to usually sometimes three, sometimes four images, depending on how much paint you have on your surface. And for this one, I'm basically just using some greens and yellows. So I'll show you the difference between like a masked image and one more traditional stencil. A traditional stencil like this one has that border, has the cutouts. Well, the mask is the shape itself with no edges around it. And so sometimes they're used interchangeably, mask versus stencil. But I wanted to show you how you can get a little bit of texture on the background with these stencils. Because what I'm doing here is I'm basically pulling up, you're going to have to overlap it a little bit. You may end up with some lines. And that's okay. It depends on how particular you are. It might really bother you. In that case, I would say stick to masks, stick to die cuts. If you don't mind having some of those interesting lines, you can just basically then put down a masked image like this. I'm going to be using, again, more of a fine copy paper for this one. I just like the smoothest of it and I find it works quite well with these stencils. And again, I'm just going to take the brayer just to help it not slide and then I'm going to run it, my hands around the image just to get a better transfer. And I like getting my fingers in all the holes and sometimes you'll notice that you can actually see the spots on it or going around the little holes that I'm making. And so you can see by using a bigger mask you basically get the perfect image and even as using your wet stencil the other option you can do is just pull it up and add to piece of paper and press down because there's still paint on that surface and that gives you a slightly different result so again depending on what you're looking for and I could have actually done the same thing with this guy as well kind of covering up the image that I just put down but you know I just wanted to give it to you as an idea so then already you have another type of print and that's just from off printing from your main image and there's your second print and there's a very subtle third print so another way you can do this is just add your 12 by 12 stencil right on top of your plate and now with this one what I'm going to do is use my palette paper here to add color so in this case I already have a little bit of green on my brayer, so I'm going to find the areas that have some leaves and I'm just going to add that into the leaf areas. Maybe we'll just add some over here too. So what I'm doing is I'm going in with my brayer and now I'm adding color over top. And so what this will do is because there is no paint underneath it, it's going to come out quite vivid. And you could go quite particular with this. I'm, I'm going fairly random really with this but you could really get that every image has its own color you could refine the leaves like you could go quite crazy with this depending on what look you want I just wanted to show you more of a proof of concept of where you could take this and so what you want to do is now you want to pull off your stencil I'm going to take a piece of paper and grab your image there you go so now you have a really nice image with both the white showing through, showing all of those stenciled spots, and you have your paint on there. You can see in this spot here, it smudged a little bit just because I had a little bit too much paint in just that one spot. But you can see the, the proof of concept for how you can do this is pretty amazing results. And as always, I like taking my second print just to see what I end up pulling up off of the jelly plate. And again, there wasn't a lot of paint left over, especially because I use that mixed media paper, but that could be a fun start of another print. And because I actually had paint on there, I could add it back down on my jelly print just to get rid of some of the paint that's on the surface. It's not much, you can only see it in areas, 
but it can be kind of that bottom layer when I start adding other color. And you might have seen those first couple slides with my brayer actually also had some a pattern on it because the pattern for putting it over the stencil does leave a mark on the page. And so this is where some of these more fine stencils can really come in handy because you can always put them down as texture and they will add really fun texture onto your surface, even if they're not quite as strong when you're trying to use them as a focal image. So what if you want to do a more focal image like this and you really want it to stand out? The other option is to start in a similar way that we did before, which is basically add it on top. This is where it's going to get a little interesting just because you're going to maybe have some of these edges if you're if you press down too hard on your surface, those might show up. But I'm going to kind of run with this and see how it goes. So I'm just adding some paint through my brayer and I'm adding it on top of the surface. And to do it this way, it's going to have to go on fairly thick just to get through. And this is a way you can do focal images where if let's say you really like where you're going with this print but you want a focal image, you can basically just add it through the stencil like this. And this is where you can have a lot of fun with color and I love jelly printing just for being able to mix colors and see kind of what I can kind of come up with. And so now we're going to try to take a print and see what we end up with. And because I took a while, basically the blue in the background had dried. So at this point we have just more of that focal image. But this is also where you could do other prints on top and then add another color. Or you could really just use markers and paints and other things just to refine that image. And there's your second image, which basically because most of the paint didn't come off of it, you have pretty much just the image and nothing around it. So I wanted to go in very quickly about how to do second layers on some of these prints. I've done this before in a previous video and that one I go into quite a bit more detail on second layers but for this one I want to just choose a couple prints and show you what you could do with them if you want to try to add additional layers. In this case I'm just going to go over the entire surface with a little bit of gold paint. This layer I'm trying to keep actually quite thin. This isn't meant to completely take over. As always, I like adding a little bit of pattern to it, so I'm just going to take the chevron and just gently push it into the surface. And now what I need to do is take this print. So this print has a really interesting background. The area in the white, you could doodle, you could do other things with it, but it's not super interesting. So I'm going to go over it. And that's why I want to line everything up at the bottom, because now you know where to line it up to try to get your print to be as even as possible. And so what's done is it's added a little bit of gold on everything. You can see a little bit of that new texture. Uh, it makes this a little less straight white. You could still add paint pens and other things on top of it. You could add even more layers than this if you wanted. But I just wanted to show you how you could take something that has a lot of white. And if you're not really into white, just add another thin layer on top and get some really interesting effects. The other option is you could go quite bright and bold with this. In this case, I'm just... I love adding gold. I really should get some more copper and silver because I do use this a lot in jelly printing. I find that little bit of gold sheen added to things. Just it, I like it. I feel like it really adds something to the prints. So in this case, again, I'm laying over an entire stencil. And we have this first print here, which is just the braid on color that we printed. I'm going to line that up. And then going to press through. And there you go. So you go from a very just straight blue to this. And what's really neat about this is if you had something like one of the feather stencils or a more detailed stencil, you could add a third layer on top of this and can just continue to add layers until you have the amount of focal images and the amount of pattern that you wanted. And what's fun with this is now that you've removed a layer, you could take a pattern like this that doesn't really have much going on. Again, it was one of those off prints, but not one of the ones that was really, it was probably a third value print. Again, just pull that paint off. And in this case, it covered up most of that print. But if you weren't wild about that print in the first place, it doesn't matter. You all of a sudden have an interesting texture, which can add, again, another few layers. But you'll notice in areas there that that green has come through. So maybe that's the look you're looking for. So now I want to show you a way that you can use some of these semi-opaque and these semi-translucent paints to do some fun stuff as well. So in this case, because again, this is semi-translucent, semi-transparent, semi-opaque, whatever language you want to use for it, this gives us some new options. So 
So now I'm going to take a more mask style stencil, press it down on the surface. And in this case, I'm just going to add it along the bottom. And this one was pretty good. It was a second print. And I want to try to add in some more yellow. And I want to see how far I can take it without completely obliterating the image. So what I've done there is because I left the stencil on, you have some areas where you can see the image all the way through. You can still see it through the tra semi-transparent paint, but I would have maybe done this a little bit thinner next time. Just a really thin layer. I did put my paint on a little thick just to help have that not completely be obliterated. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you some more ideas on how to use your stencils with your jelly plate. And if you've enjoyed this video, if you could like it, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And as always, my supply list is below. There are affiliate links in that supply list and that is just another way that you can support this channel and it allows me to make content every week. And if you've enjoyed this video, uh, you can always click here to see one of my other jelly printing videos. And that one is talking about using smaller jelly plates. I hope you have a really great week, that you take some time for some personal self-care, and I will see you next time.